Walking outside labyrinthian over cracks along under the trees I know this town grounded in a compass Cardinal landing in the dogwood I keep going over it over and over My steps iterate my shame How come every outcome such a come down Lately afternoon with the shades drawn down Kept saying I just wanted to see it Saying what's wrong with that needle shaking out guys welcome back to the vibe within podcast i chose this song as kind of like the focal point of this episode because this song's energy is really really feeling like um the collective energy is is matching this song it's <laughs> it's crazy because um i haven't really been able to like listen to music that much recently and if you know me, music is really a huge part of my life. I mean, I've been going to music festivals for so many years, and I worked in the music industry for a little while, and I, and if you've taken any of my yoga classes, then uh, you know that music is a huge part of my teaching. Um, I, I like to kind of create an experience through music, um, but I haven't been able to really get into a lot of music recently, and it's kind of scary um but with that said I think it says something bigger that music is very very um fragile and music can really affect your emotional your moods you know where your thoughts are music has the capability to really really shoot you back to a memory or to a person or to a relationship that failed or to that fight that you'll never forget. Music is just such a powerful and and scary tool because there will be moments in my life when I feel like I have it all together and then I hear a song and it brings me back to a very depressing stage of my life and all of a sudden I feel like I'm back in that phase and just from a song just from hearing a song it senses to your body and to your your, sorry my cat's going insane um it signals to your body the somatics of your body the physicality of your body that you're back in that scenario that you're back in that phase of life so you know keep in mind you know you might love a certain band or you might love certain music but you have to ask yourself is listening to that music actually going to serve you um, and your mental health because those are two different things sometimes and I I think that sometimes people don't realize like even though you really really like a band um, and you love their music and you've been a fan of theirs for years um, their music actually might trigger something within you um, to kind of stay in like a depressive pattern or like a anxiety pattern or cycle or thought loop. So I'm not trying to tell you to not listen to music. What I'm trying to express um, is the importance of questioning how you're feeling when you listen to certain music because um, uh, what I've realized is that it brings me back to very dark times in my life and I'm at the point in my shadow work and healing journey where I've done enough. Um, well, I guess there's never enough, but I'm, I'm at the point where I would like to step out of the processing and like the understanding of the programming and the conditioning and the trauma and the childhood wounds and the adolescence wounds and the college wounds and um all of like you know you can get really deep and in, into that and I think that's a very necessary part of the work is the dark night of the soul you know like sitting with your with your suffering sitting with your pain sitting with your trauma um sitting with it and being still with it rather than pushing it away rather than um you know <sighs> punishing your body or you know doing all these toxic behaviors that might um, 
make the the pain and the suffering go away momentarily you know which is why we resort to addiction and substance and eating disorders and over exercising or shopping or porn or whatever it is um everybody's got that something that they reach for or they do in order to turn down the volume of the the discomfort and the suffering and just the the day-to-day you know feelings of unease and I feel like that's what um kind of that's why I'm so uh deep in the meditation kind of stuff but um what I was saying before I I got into the meditation is um that sometimes you just need to get out of those those places of processing and whatever so yeah I'm done with that thought but if you're if you're like me and you're like okay I've had enough I've um I definitely know why I am the way that I am I know I know my programs I know my conditionings I know my family trauma I know I know why my parents are the way they are I've really analyzed I've really cr- like um you know uh, studied myself self study I've really studied my life that's how I feel right now I mean I feel like a lot of you guys who are listening are in it too you guys are no stranger to inner work Um, I'm sure you listen to so many other podcasts about it and you get to the point where you say okay I know what I know I know why I am the way that I am but now what's really important is what I do from here Um, instead of always replaying that story in your head like oh this is why I am the way that I am Um, or you know I didn't get my needs met when I was a teenager so this is why I am the way that I am um that little voice of whatever age you were when the trauma started that that version of you and me is going to be screaming at the top of their lungs um to say no don't don't forget me don't um don't don't think I'm over this, you know, like even if you're a little kid, whether you're five, whether you're 15, whether you're 20, whatever, whenever that trauma happened, that version of you is going to continue to scream at you and say, how dare you move on with your life? You know, um, this, this isn't over, you know, but, but it is over because we're, we're now in this present moment and whatever that trauma was, it is over. And unfortunately, um, our inner child or our inner adolescent, they want it to just be fixed. They want to replay it and replay it until, um, it's rewritten and redirected and the movie's already been made. The movie's already been released. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so I feel like where we're at right now in the collective is this place of overwhelm, of, okay, we're, we're, we're really waking up now. We're really aware of our toxic behaviors and ourselves and our family, and um, a huge part of that journey is... Um, acceptance which can come with a lot of grief and depression because accepting what is I mean that's kind of a depressing phrase if you think about it I've been listening to a lot of meditation um, dharma kind of talks about buddhism two of my favorite meditation teachers who I listen to their Dharma talks religiously on their podcast is Sharon Salzberg and Joseph Goldstein. So I'll link those in the show notes. Um, If you're going to listen to a Buddhist meditation teacher and their Dharma talks, those two are the ones I highly recommend. I have so many downloads and epiphanies when I'm listening to them talk about emotion and anger and our lives um, because Buddhism really is rooted in psychology and I think I talked about this in in my last episode in my last solo episode but um, that's why I really got in into Buddhism because it it didn't feel like a religion (laughs) when um, I got into it I was like oh this is Buddhism I thought it was like something crazy Um, And then I started going to the the Dharma meditation recovery meetings that are Buddhist and meditation based. And I was like, oh, Buddhism is just a path and like a a foundation of of 
of you know steps and and ways to live life in the most easeful way so that every area of your life feels like you're not resisting it you're not forcing anything you're not stressing yourself out you're not letting your emotions run wild it's very psychology driven and based it's 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 just crazy because I, I never thought that I'd be sitting here and and talking about this on my podcast but I feel like the decade of my life where I was just a victim to eating disorders and drugs and alcohol and the most toxic relationships it was just trauma on top of trauma on top of trauma it was just like when I look back it's like what if I had Buddhism then you know I don't think I would have gotten into half of the shit that I got myself into but again Buddhism and psychology is all about forgiving yourself accepting your life for what it is. Um, there's no uh, benefit in ruminating in the past. There's no way that you can rewrite that script and rewrite that movie and direct it the way that you want it to be directed. It's already out. It's already the way it is. But what we can change and what Buddhism and psychology-based Buddhism and meditation practices is all about is that we can accept our past and we can mindfully transform our reactions and our perspectives into a a way that benefits ourselves more and it, and we feel less stressed we feel more healthy we don't feel like our the situations in our lives are hooking us and and catching us and then we're running through the mud and we're tripping over rocks all the time you know it's like that constant struggle energy I feel like Buddhism is just trying to lower down the volume of that struggle energy and just flow as best as possible through the trials and tribulations of, you know, grief, of losing people, of failed relationships, of addiction. I mean, a lot of Buddhists uh, and a lot of meditation (laughs) Um, places like Shambhala that I went to in Philly when I was living there. Uh, the Buddhist meditation recovery meetings, it's, it's just that, it, you know, Buddhism is a huge medicinal tool and practice. You don't even have to label it as a, as a religion because for me, it's, it's a way of life. It's just a tool like yoga and it teaches people with addiction, with you know, decades of addiction, um, using the, the, the fundamentals of Buddhism can help you get out of that, that toxic, vicious, torturous cycle that you can find yourself in. Like I, I know what it feels like. And I'm, this, this podcast episode isn't going to be all about Buddhism. So don't worry. I, I know like not everybody wants to hear about religion and Buddhism. I'm not trying to sell you Buddhism. I'm trying to sell you that there is a way out of the torture because I'm slowly reprogramming and rewiring my brain and my beliefs and my blocks and my trauma, like mind, you know, like I'm, I'm using all the tools that I can, and Buddhism and meditation is one of them. Um, I, I, I combine them, but it's really two. So that's where I'm at, and I wouldn't be sharing this for no reason. I mean, I today before I started recording, I was like, why am I, why do I do a podcast? You know, like, why, why do I even do it? Um, I don't really make money from it. <laughs> like a lot of people do with their podcasts. Um, I just like don't, (laughs) I just lost interest in like trying to find sponsors and, you know, if a sponsor hits me up, then I'll, and I, and I vibe with them, then yeah. Um, But at this point, it's not even about that. It's about me um, trying to help people because before COVID, when I was helping people, it was in the form of me teaching yoga and going to equinox or exhale and or city fitness in philly and teaching classes that were packed mat to mat and i got really used to that and i it inflated my ego a lot i'm not gonna lie um i 
dude, I would leave class specifically from Equinox. Uh, if anybody is listening from Equinox, hey, uh, I miss you guys. Um, I miss all of my students, but Equinox in particular because I only got one class a week there. And Equinox had a very strict schedule and blah, blah, blah. I'm not trying to get too deep, too deep into it. I have a lot of shit I want to talk about. But um, long story short, I would leave the class. My classes were sold out um, in, in like a matter of like minutes apparently. And like the students would have to like sign up on their phone and blah, blah, blah. So I would, that in itself would inflate my ego. But at the same time, I said to myself, well, that means that I'm, you know, I need to take this seriously. Like I'm, I'm, my classes are really helping people apparently. And I think it's a double way road because me teaching those classes even though I wasn't doing the yoga I was just walking around the room I don't I don't really do yoga when I teach when I teach I'm one of those teachers who will like stand at the back of the room and squat so I can get out of your way I don't like to be in the front of the room it's not about me so when I go to a class and the teacher's in the front of the room the whole fucking time I'm just like what are you doing like get out of the way like nobody wants to see you (laughs) Like, I know that sounds really, really dark, but it's like nobody is coming to class like specifically to like see you like they want your class because what you have to offer is is going to help them heal and feel good in their body. But they're not there to like see what you're wearing or talk to you or like some some students maybe, but um, I don't know. I would leave those classes feeling high and it got to the point where I was like, oh my God, I love, I love this so much. And then when I went through a very, very crazy rock bottom in Miami, when I had to move, um, I got scammed by a real estate agent. I've talked about this so many times in the past year. Um, so I'm sure you're tired of hearing about it, but I got scammed by a real estate agent. She stole my money and I had to put my shit in storage and I had to leave Miami because I was homeless. (laughs) I actually wrote an article about it. Um, If I remember, I'll put that in the show notes. Let me write that down um, so I remember. But um, article in show notes. All right, sorry. Um, So... Yeah, uh, that really fucked my head up. So now I have a lot of PTSD around, like, moving in general. Like, just just the thought, just the energy of moving and needing to find a place to live gives me severe, severe panic attacks. Um, I've gotten a lot better with with managing my panic attacks, but, uh, yeah, they are intense. Um, As I'm sparking up a CBD joint... (laughs) get this going um so what the fuck was I even fucking talking about why was I talking about oh how my ego was inflated and equinox made my ego inflated and then I had to I forcefully left because I got scammed by this real estate agent so as I take a hit okay recenter that fucked me up really, really badly because I was so comfortable with my life, almost too comfortable. And I knew that something was going to push me out of Miami eventually. I knew that like my mental health was like getting really, really bad because even though I looked healthy, even though I looked like I got my shit together, I was still suffering with my eating disorder. Um, even though I was like so like more sober I was not drinking, not doing drugs. I was like really honing in on the podcast and um, my and just teaching yoga and my cat and you know my life wasn't really that much different than I, I didn't date. I didn't really go out. Um, so when I think about the difference between COVID and now, I guess that's what I'm talking about. So this is the nice little segue. Is that Um, the one thing that I'm lacking right now that is really starting to get to my mental health is teaching yoga to people, human connection. And I didn't realize how much I would miss it because yes, as much as I loved it, it was also a very draining, um, 
it drained me. Like those, those packed classes, whether it was City Fitness, Equinox, or Exhale, I felt so drained afterwards. And I always um, wished that I could not feel so drained after. And so if you've, you know, if you've known me for a while or if you're a student of mine at any of those classes, any of those gyms, you probably know that after I teach, I would go and use the sauna. That was like my ritual because the sauna would um, detox any energy that I absorbed from the class um, because people come into yoga with, with some heavy shit going on. I mean, it's not all love and light in my classes. It's, it's, you, you don't, I don't walk in and I'm like, hi guys, how are you? Oh my God. Like, how's everybody doing? It's so nice to see you. That's not how I talk. Like when you come into my class, you're there to do some work. And it's, it's also a really nice vibe. I don't make it dark. I I put on music that's uplifting and also very, very powerful to connect you to your soul. So sometimes it is kind of dark lo-fi electronic or whatever music like there's no rules um so I, I got so used to that like like I would use my my yoga classes as like a therapy session and it was a therapy session for not only my my students but it was a therapy session for myself because I feel like like through the movement and oops through the movement and what I'm teaching and whatever flows out, you know, I never, I never, I could never plan a class and what I'm going to talk about because you can go into a class wanting to talk about hope or faith. And when you walk in, you're like, this energy is not hope and faith, (laughs) you know? So there's no point in expecting your class to be on that energy of what you want to talk about, of what you want the, the theme to be. Like that doesn't make sense. So I would always just wing it when I when I would walk into the class, I'd kind of feel where people are at and whatever kind of topic that came to mind that made sense, I would that would be like the theme and the dharma of the class. Um that's just how I teach. I don't know how other teachers go into a class and say, this is what I'm going to talk about. This is the sequence I'm going to do. Like, I feel like that's a little crazy because you can't be so stuck in your ways. That's a form of attachment. That's a form of control. That's a form of grasping and needing the class to be a certain way when the whole reason of teaching yoga is to help people and what they need. Um, And sometimes what they need is different than what you came into the class wanting to teach. And that was, that's a huge lesson for me that, um, I had to learn early, you know, I would come into class and I would say, this is the sequence I'm going to teach. And people just, there'd be beginners, there'd be advanced, there'd be people who were looking at me like I didn't know what I was doing. You really have to cater to your audience. And so what I'm saying is that's, that's a huge thing that not only me is lacking, um, everybody is lacking right now, real human connection. And I actually had um, a friend of mine message me this morning, and he said, I really need to be close to someone right now. And I, fuck, like when I read that, I was like, fuck, I feel you. I hear you. Like I hear where that's coming from, and it's like this this longing to – to just be intimate like Jesus Christ you know what I mean like I mean I don't know how 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 people are doing it I'm I'm doing pretty okay because I was so single and celibate I've been celibate for over a year and a half now um so I was doing this far before um COVID so for people who were you know dating and going out there and really putting themselves out there and always around people and always partying or always doing the next thing or connecting with people um this is a very like this is a tower moment you know and I have the tower card out in front of me because I did pull some cards that I kind of want to get into a little bit in this episode um the tower uh, the tower and the three of cups is what I, 
what I pulled the other day. And this goes really perfectly with what I'm talking about right now. So I guess spirit is just guiding me through this this episode because I kind of I came in with it and I, with this energy of like, oh, my God, I have so much shit I want to talk about. I have so many notes. And it's like, OK, like, who cares? Like, you have notes. You got shit you want to talk about. It's all going to flow in the right time and everything kind of links together in a way that you probably, you know, aren't aren't suspecting but there's a lot of things that I that I will talk about in this episode and it will require a topic change but I think that goes hand in hand with like where we're at in life like you want things to be different um but you have to just like flow with with how it's happening right now and things will be different and things are changing but the idea of how we want it to change like that that quote that I've heard and I've I've talked about it on my pod on my Instagram you don't have to you don't have to give up your dream you have to give up the way that you think your dream is going to happen so the way that you think your dream is going to happen and your success and your whatever you see it one way because you see like other people's success happening that way but your spirit guides in the universe that they can see things in ways that we never thought could happen or we can't even we can't even conceptualize it because our consciousness doesn't have the capability of seeing things in that way because we haven't lived it because everything that we experience that we feel that we do is kind of based on the past we we compare and contrast everyone and every situation and everything in our lives to something that happened in the past because that's the only thing we have to base our um, facts on is that, well, this happened this way, so this isn't going to work out or um, this person fucked me over and this person reminds me of them, so they're probably just going to fuck me over. Um, this is this is some serious energy that I'm trying to release because I've realized that um, – that's holding me back a lot in my integration process and the integration process requires um i don't know how to say this but integrating yourself back into society like pushing yourself back into society sometimes even though it feels uncomfortable um i've had to do that and that's what the three of cups this card is representative of so i if you don't obviously this is a podcast you can't see it um go check out my instagram and i posted the tower and the three of cups in my post (sighs) these two cards are just so clashing energies guys it's just like it's so fucking crazy and i've had these two cards sitting on my coffee table since i pulled them because it's just like spirit is just like yep this is how it is and the three of cups is saying you need to push yourself into social scenarios regardless of how it's going to make you feel uncomfortable or regardless if it's going to make you feel like you have to put on a mask of happiness because everybody has to do that every once in a while and if you keep catering to your depression and and you keep catering to your isolation and the hermit card and the hermit mode that we're all so used to um, because I've gotten so comfortable being alone that it's it's really alarming and concerning, and I know that I'm not alone. Everybody's kind of feeling this this deep sense of longing, but also this like deep sense of comfort and in the alienation. So this card is showing three like goddess-looking archetype figures holding wine glasses in the air and socializing, and I think it's really funny because. The three couples that are in the back of them, they're blacked out. They're just like shadow figures. And there's, it's all couples behind them, behind this three, uh, these three goddesses. There's two, a couple on the right, in the back, and to the left. And you can tell that each couple, it's a guy and a girl, and it's a romantic. So this card, oh my God, it's just so much shit is coming up when I look at it for us. So it's saying that these these goddesses, you know, they might not be in a romantic, intimate relationship there, but they are connected um, in a friendship way. So what this is telling me is that 
we need to focus on our friendships. You know, if we don't have romance in our lives, it's, it's okay. It's just not meant to be right now. We need to hone in on our friendships and deepen the friendships in our lives, even if it's a new friend and you're not feeling that connected to them. Like, maybe just start deepening it a little bit, um, texting and calling people and you don't have to make plans with people if that gives you anxiety because that really gives me anxiety. Um, I don't like to make plans with people if I'm feeling weary um, or if I'm feeling like I'm going <clears> to <throat> like back out of it. Um, connecting with people virtually is fine. For me, I've had to, like last week, I went to um, Philly and then I saw my friend get married in, in Maryland. And I want to talk about that because this is these two cards are very, um, I mean, they connect with my life, but I have a feeling they're going to connect with your life as well because I did get a lot of comments and reflections back on Instagram about this, so about these two cards. So the Three of Cups um, energy is telling me that there is a lot of light in your life, um, in our lives, because the three women on this card are, are in color. And the couples behind them are only shadows. They're only, they're black. They're, there's, there's no detail. So, and I've been having a lot of dreams about rejection, about um, processing like failures and processing um, letdowns. And what did, what did this book say? Um, for the Five of Cups, it said... Um, Oh, processing disappointments, rejections, and or bouts of negative thinking. So this card is, it says it's, it's about when you're too focused on the emotional pain of what didn't work out, you miss what's still available to you. So yeah, um, that, that's, that's the five of cups that I was talking about earlier. Um, but I feel like that goes hand in hand with the three of cups since since these cards are all sitting in front of me it just it's so it just makes so much sense so we're guarded um we're really guarded with um the five of cups we're like well none of these past relationships or friendships really worked out so why am i going to put myself into a new relationship or a new really challenging or vulnerable situation you know why am I going to do that to myself and the three of cups is saying look you you do have people in your life you do have friends in your life and people who are on the same level as you and you don't have to feel so alone um everybody's feeling these heavy energies so you know you don't have to always talk about heaviness to people, but you don't always have to put on a happy happy face and a happy mask. That's not genuine either. So if you're anything like me in these energies of the Tower and the Three of Cups, it's like the Tower is signifying... Um, and if you're not in a tarot, it's fine. I, I still am explaining to you the energies that's occurring in the collective. It doesn't even have to be based on these cards. I was going to be posting, I was going to be talking about the energy, the energies that we're in anyways, so yeah, but the tower archetype card tells me that there's going to be deep-rooted changes, and there's a lot of anxiety that's, that's present, and moving into the unknown of what to do, like where to live, what am I doing, where am I going, why am I here, I've been having all those thoughts about where I'm living, why I'm here, money, um, a lot of, and the tower is all about that. It's literally like every, every category of your life, love, money, body, family, career, success, romance, like everything, every single structure and every single theme and like category of your life is being uprooted and, on this card, um, there's two hands that are like holding up the tower that it's, and it's like, you know, it's on flames and it's fucking, it's, it's tearing down, you know? And as much as we want to keep things safe and keep things in our knowing, um, I feel like 
when the tower shows up it's like there's a lot of uncertainty of like where we're going what we're doing what job we're gonna have who we're like who's gonna come into our life and help us um feel better um so we we're like grasping on to like how we think things should be again this this idea of grasping on to how we think our lives should be playing out in our success and our dreams and the tower is telling us that we need to just be okay with the whole thing wiping out and rebuilding from the ground up because it's just going to be more strong that way if we keep building on top of like wobbly wood and like keep adding nails to it or just keep you know that's not how carpentry works you have to like sometimes just start again and oh man I love that shit fuck like s- like starting again <laughs> like Sharon Salzberg talks about this all the time in her in her meditational work is just starting again that's it like the tower is starting again and it's it doesn't mean like everything in your life is going to shit and you're gonna have to start over and you know get a new get new everything or it's it's talking about like the way that we're thinking the way that we're putting ourselves into our career and what we're manifesting and like our self-limiting beliefs and um these toxic loops that we find ourselves hooked in and and constantly like harping on on what's going on and trying to change it and you know like (laughs) A broken record it's is what it sounds like <laughs> and it's just like the tower is just like all right throw it out and get a new record if that makes any sense because it'll play clean and and you know you don't have to tape it together and hope that it works and all these fucking crazy analogies are coming up to me so this is how I know it's not me it's spirit because sometimes I say things and I'm just like what I've literally never sometimes I I'm just like something comes over me and I'm just like that wasn't me like I don't say things like that I don't say phrases like that so we're doing some heavy 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 channeling here I don't know who I'm channeling I don't know who listens to a lot of records or someone had a broken record like like a like a record broke um and yeah so plateaus I also feel this energy of plateau when I feel um the tower and the three of cups because it's like it's just like such clashing energies it's like okay everything's falling apart but then the three of cups is like but you have a lot of joy to really hone in on in your life and joy is such oh my god I feel like a lot of people are talking about joy right now I feel like it's just like a hot topic to to talk about um remember that store hot topic wow um but the there is an episode on the 10 percent happier um wow don't mind that person just slamming a door outside because nobody has um you know awareness anyways um i need to control my anger and that's something that meditation really really is about and a lot and sharon salzberg actually talks about anger a lot so Let's stick a pin in that and I'll come back to it. But what I was saying is um, a lot of people are talking about joy and there's a episode on the 10% Happier podcast um, and they're talking about joy and how we can experience joy even if we don't have joy in our lives, we can borrow joy from other people's experiences um, and we can kind of feed off of other people's joy because you know it will it'll spark the joy within us and it's hard to get to that place because it's hard to feel joy when everything's going to shit in your life but somebody else has like all of these like amazing blessings and all they're posting on Instagram is blessed and you know they have tons of money and they have no worries and they have a perfect relationship it's like there's a fine line between bragging about things that are going right in your life and trying to uplift people like not using all the things that are going right in your life to like make make people jealous um but trying to push some of your joy onto people 
there's a way of doing that and I don't know how to really describe it but this this episode does a lot of that and it's the 10% happier podcast um you know go go check it out anyways um so these cards resonate and I'm gonna explain a, a real life scenario of what these cards mean um and even if you're not in a tarot again the energies everybody's feeling them and it just is a it's not a coincidence but it just you know the fact that I pulled these cards makes me it makes it easier for me to talk about this shit because I have the them in front of me but I went to a wedding last week and um when I flew there and I got to my dad's I questioned myself and I said why the fuck am I here why did I do this why did I why did I fly cross country and spend a lot of money um and I and I remembered I had to keep reminding myself oh this is part of the integration this is part of the work this is you can't just sit in your apartment all day long doing zoom meetings and recovery meetings and going on hikes alone and hanging out with your cats and expect that some big healing is going to happen no like I'm stuck in that pattern I'm stuck in that loop of isolation of comfort of you know toxic behavior so the three of cups you know that tells that's that's the clarifying moment for me is oh yeah that, that's right I have friends I have people in my life who who I could also connect with and talk with so I um I did spend a couple nights at my dad's apartment and before I get into this whole thing I my dad texted me yesterday and said that his neighbor um follows me on Instagram and listens to the podcast which is crazy because my dad li- like I'm from like a small fucking town in New Jersey um so if you're listening whoever that is um I I think he gave I think he told me your Instagram but I looked and I couldn't find you so the reason why this girl um knew that he was that you know he was my dad is because I posted some stories when I was at my dad's of all the Halloween decorations that he puts out every year in his lawn and it's it's a production people it's not just your everyday like Halloween decorations like this shit's serious <laughs> it requires like <laughs> like wires and setup and fucking it's it's insane like my dad has the skills to do like set production if he wanted to anyways um I I posted a lot of stories of of us looking at the decorations and I put him in some stories and I guess she reached she she texted him and said that you know she's been following me and if you're listening um I want you to to DM me so I can send you some uh classes some yoga classes and maybe my meditation course if you want it um which if anybody's interested in the meditation course it's called modern meditations and you can find it on Etsy on my Etsy store it's in the show notes and there's also um a lot of virtual classes that I have up I just put a new one out it's a powerful yin practice so it's movement and breath um and it's a lot of powerful yin so it's kind of different um and it's all about manifestation so if you're interested in that you can go check it out it's only 15 bucks um but yeah, so I found it really interesting that um, my dad said, oh, like one of my neighbors is, she follows you. It's like, wow, it's such a small world. I I really don't, I don't know how many people listen to this podcast. I really don't know. Um, I don't really look at <laughs> like numbers. I honestly could care less at this point. Um, I'm doing it because it's art for me. It's expression. So I don't know about you guys, but it seems like the older I get, the more of a tomboy I become. But at the same time, no matter how tomboyish I feel, I still need quality makeup. And I definitely still want to feel glammed up, especially during the holidays. Even if you're alone this holiday season, it doesn't mean you have to just hang out in your pajamas. You can still dress up. You can still put on makeup and feel good about yourself. 
Thrive Cosmetics is a new beauty brand that I discovered and they have high performance award winning products that are both vegan and cruelty free. And as you guys know, I'm vegan, so that's kind of important to me. I don't want to be putting, you know, products that have come from an animal on my face. It just, I don't know, just kind of grosses me out when I think about it. Um, but I like to keep it simple, you know, especially since I'm still healing my hormonal acne. And what I do love to do is always enhance my eyes because it always makes me feel good when I just put in a little bit of effort into my eyes. And a lot of you guys have actually commented on some of my pictures of my eyes. Um, I've always been obsessed with mascara. Uh, I've always been a mascara junkie. So when I found Thrive Cosmetics, I was really, really happy with the mascara they have. It's the award-winning mascara, and a lot of the holiday sets right now actually come with a free tube of it. It's called the Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara, and honestly, this mascara is, it's bomb. I mean, I think the main thing with mascara is that the brush needs to be legit, and this is like a really, really nice brush, and what it basically does is it makes you look like you're wearing kind of fake lashes, but they look natural. You know, they're they're flake-free, smudge-free, clump-free. Um, I, I just, I love it. The packaging is really nice and sleek. And I also like the Brilliant Eye Brightener, which is really, really easy to use. It makes such a huge difference just by putting it in the corners of your eyes, and it just brightens up your entire eye. And that's all I've been using recently is just the, the eye brightener and the mascara. You know, if I'm just like going running errands or if I'm going to the grocery store or whatever, this is a very simple way to brighten up and enhance your eyes. So if you're a mascara junkie like me, definitely give Thrive Cosmetics a try because you will absolutely love it. And with every purchased product, Thrive Cosmetics is helping women in need to thrive by donating funds and products. I really like that. I feel like we need to be more mindful of where we're putting our money and our energy. So start thriving and help women in need today by going to thrivecosmetics.com slash vibe for 15% off of your first purchase. That's Thrive, C-A-U-S-E, M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash vibe for 15% off thrivecosmetics.com slash vibe. And I'm doing it because like I was saying way earlier in the podcast, um, why do I do this is because, well, I miss teaching yoga and that's how I was helping people before, like really on like a deep level. And this seems to be the next best thing of really helping people. And I feel like my life is one big like project and experimentation and study and I take notes and I come into these episodes with so many things um, that are important to me and psychology and mental health and healing and I know that that's where you guys are at too so um, pardon me if I seem sometimes all over the place in these solo episodes but I I try to stay um, focused on each topic that is really important so um, now I I kind of feel weird talking about my dad on on my podcast which I've done before, um, the depression and nostalgia episode back like over a year ago, I talked about a really, really crazy experience that I had in high school with a abusive boyfriend and how my dad like was just so sweet about it and uh, how he was there for me. And I cried in this episode and um, <laughs> it's just... You know, I, I do talk about my dad a little bit on this podcast because that's a lot of what this tower energy is is for me um, because the tower card is like I've been holding on and grasping on to a lot of my trauma that's around my parents and my family. Um, 
I've been really holding on to it and grasping on to it and being like, oh, but, but things can be different. You know, they can change or they can be different or th- their lives can be better or I, they can be happier. And I talk about th- this with my therapist a lot is that my shame and my guilt and my, my like attachment to like wishing things were different and, and wishing that I could change things and my relationship with my mom specifically and my sister me and my dad have a great relationship um but what came up I mean the tower card is like a very like structural like home home thing and I think it's really funny that I went home and I stayed in my sister's room um it's a really tiny room but you know she's she basically lives at her boyfriend's house so I had I had our room to kind of hang out in and it was weird, but it was also really comforting um, to be there. And I, I won't get too into it, but going to my dad's apartment is always triggering for me because he's lived there for 20 years. And the place looks exactly the same as it did when he moved in 20 years ago. Like, things haven't moved. Nothing's changed. Um, he's, he's kind of a low-grade hoarder. But, I mean, I guess I think a lot of baby boomers are. Um and it just causes it just brings up so many memories and triggers and thoughts and it snaps me back to that that phase of my life when things were were not okay when i was in high school and a lot of panic a lot of depression in a, in a different way in a way worse way but i take on a lot of my father's what i think he's feeling because when i read articles about hoarding and adhd and depression um it, it makes a lot of sense that that's the way that his apartment looks. And I'm not trying to bash him. It's just the way that it is. And I'm, it could be a lot worse. He's not a, like a straight up hoarder. Um, but grasping on to a lot of things shows me that he's grasping on to the, the past or memories or, you know, not, not being able to get rid of things, not being able to um, release things. And this article that I found, oh my God, it's so fucking interesting. It's about ADHD and depression. And, um, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, ADHD and depression and how people with ADHD, um, they'll, they'll be the kind of person where like they'll put something down and like they won't clean it for like five years. Dust will, will you know, pile up on it. And that's how my grandmother's house is. So my dad's mom is exactly like this. So obviously, like, this is why the, this is why he is the way that he is, and I can't expect him to change. And my grasping and my attachment to him wanting to change his ways to make myself feel comfortable, that's suffering. And um, there's, there's a fine line between, like, being, like, having preferences and boundaries. And so I did express to him before I came um, over there, um, I said, Dad, you know, I'm having a lot of anxiety. I, I have a lot of anxiety around clutter and around mess, and I don't want to have a panic attack when I come there. But um, I just really, you know, if you could make it so that um, it's not too cluttered or anything like that, that'd be great. And he, he did try. He really did try. And it, and it was, I could see that. So um, preferences and boundaries are really important in rebuilding the relationships in your life because that was a win that was a win-win for both of us because I expressed to him how I felt he didn't take it personally which is awesome and he did make it a little bit more livable for me I, I mean I still had moments of panic because it wasn't anywhere near it's never gonna be anywhere near where I want it to be when I go there it's always going to feel uncomfortable but that's where meditation and buddhism come in is because that attachment and that longing and that fantasy land way of living and thinking of oh but if he just could change if he if he could just get a new apartment if he could just move out of this apartment that he's been in for 20 years he doesn't want to he doesn't want to move right now he's you know we're also in a pandemic so it's like The fact that I want to change the way that he lives, he's in his ways. He's 
you know, an adult. It's not fair for anyone to to like fantasy land somebody into like, oh, well, if they change and everything would be fine or that's not how it is. But the preferences and the boundaries are important because I feel like me expressing that to him actually made the the experience. It was the best um, experience that I've had visiting my dad since since high school. You know, I'm 30 years old and I haven't lived there since I was, you know, 18. Um, and I can thank meditation and the practices of Buddhism and learning about boundaries and preferences and communicating on a healthy level rather than letting my emotions take control and letting my anger and my anxiety and my panic take control and making me like react and say things in a way that's you know not going to make him want to even see me so it's all about how we use our words and how we use and transform our our emotions and our fear and our anxiety and our panic and how we can like use them as information and knowledge and then and then move forward with that I have to charge my computer it's gonna die um so yes I expressed what I needed and it was a good it was a good trip so the tower card and the tower energy told me that it's time to release the grip of how my family is structured, like the actual physical structure. Um, I need to let go of their behaviors and their patterns and not take them on as my own because I'm different than them. You know, I'm, I'm different than my entire family. I don't, I'm not in um, a toxic relationship like my mom has been for a long time. I'm not um, messy or I'm not, and I'm not a hoarder and I am pretty like OCD. And that's another thing is like the ADD, ADHD and depression. Um, it's really interesting because if you if you deal with with depression um <laughs> depression has so many stereotypes that like are not true like for me I'm not the kind of person that lays in bed all day depressed like I have ADHD I think um or ADD um but the hype the hyperactivity part really does ring true with me too because in order for me to to lower the volume of my depression I go a hundred miles a minute and I work out and I, you know, do my rituals and I, I journal and I'm, I'm always, I'm always doing something. Um, always cleaning, always going for a hike, working out, doing workout videos, fucking it's, it's insanity. And this actually makes a lot of sense as to why I am that way is because my dad, um, my dad is a workaholic so ADHD and depression run in my family my mom is always on the go always doing something always doing a project always cleaning or organizing or painting or redecorating or selling things or (laughs) working on a project my mom and my dad are very similar and I feel like that's probably why they got divorced (laughs) when so when I was so young um (laughs) because as much as they want to as much as they hate each other wow I mean they they do not talk I mean they've never they haven't talked in like 20 years um as much as they hate each other they're very similar but very different at the same time and I am I am a equal spitting image of my mom and my dad because my mom is OCD with cleaning and I have that I have that from her so I'm really happy that I got that trait from her Um, and with my dad he's a workaholic and always on the go and you know always trying to help people always you know just he just doesn't 
ever stop. He has a landscaping business. He, everybody knows him in the town. You know, he has so many friends. You know, he's got buddies everywhere. Oh, I got a buddy here, a buddy there. Da, da, da. Um, everybody knows him because of the Halloween decorations. It's like my dad has such an established, purposeful life where he's at. And I feel like that's why he's also very comfortable with where he's at living in this apartment for 20 years you know everything's the same because he, i mean it people of that generation they don't they don't really know change that well i mean they live the same life the 9 to 5 getting um your pension or whatever and then waiting to be retired and this programming and this conditioning of of my father and and how he was raised um has really been my tower energy moment and understanding that i don't you know and and understanding that like like the guilt and the shame that i feel because i feel like he's not living his best life or he's overworking himself into the ground and he's you know, not giving himself a break. Well, he likes it that way. He fucking likes it that way. He's not the kind of person who's going to just do nothing. He's a Gemini, overworking, workaholic, you know, wakes up at six in the morning, sometimes five in the morning, has very like he, he, he does his morning stuff and he has two two big careers and he's he supports his daughters like he's a fucking cool ass dude and the fact that I'm you know I my shame and my guilt come from a place of just wanting him to live a long healthy happy life and for some reason I feel guilt and shame because I feel like he's not living a happy life because of how much he works but on the flip side of that his purpose and his happiness is coming from his work and what and everything that he's doing so the Halloween decorations the landscaping business the he has another career with my uncle who he's you know he's he's working this career and then he's going to be able to retire so my 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 wish my hope is that when he retires uh, he'll buy a house somewhere maybe in Florida maybe in California and restart his life but then again it's like why am I grasping onto that that idea for him to move to a warm place like I did you know I think part of it is that I know that there's more out there I know that there's more experience and purpose and people and connections out there and he's like kind of missing out on that So as I'm talking through this, it's kind of like I'm having a therapy session with my spirit guides, and I hope that what I'm sharing is helping you because a lot of these archetypes and a lot of these ways of life and being, they play out in all of our relationships, and we don't realize why we're feeling shame and guilt and grief towards our family, and it's because we see them stuck in a pattern or a living way of living and we like want so desperately to like help them see see more of the world and it kind of hurts it it hurts to watch them be quote unquote stuck and maybe they don't look at it as that way maybe they don't see themselves as being stuck and they're just living their life like my dad he's maybe he's masking depression with his over workaholicism and and all that and all the things that he does and trying to help people and but it it just is what it is it's like I, I'm tired of being the sh- the the black sheep whistle whistleblower of um my family like trying to get everybody to see their toxic ways of living like I'm tired of being that person and I think that's a huge piece of meditation and like the journey of 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 waking up and like the awakening process is like waking up to your bullshit waking up to everybody's bullshit around you and waking up to all the toxic things about you and everyone around you but then a huge part of the awakening is saying oh fuck I can't change them I can't change them and that's where Buddhism comes in and helps because it's basically saying 
you don't have you don't need to have that burden of trying to change the people in your life you don't need to hold on to that and grasp that and hold that heavy dark burden and that huge load anymore and and just like like feeling that that acceptance and that like that permission to just accept things for how they are and know that your family they're suffering you're not in charge of healing it and maybe they aren't even suffering that much and you're just overthinking it and you're just over analyzing them because you're so awake like when we become so awake to the 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 conditioning and the programming and this is what I was talking about before so it kind of brings me full circle when it when it when we're so tapped in I mean Jesus Christ I feel like a lot of us are so tapped in especially millennials people who are especially like 25 to like 40 I know that people in their 40s are probably not millennials but um I feel like the the generation of people 25 to 40 um we are so tapped in to the point where it hurts and we're just like this is too much this is we understand too much and we understand why people are the way they are and it's like oh man it hurts to see it hurts to watch it hurts to feel it hurts to understand ourselves and the way that we are and it hurts to understand the people around us and why they are the way they are you know when I when I was at my dad's for those two nights and then and then another night after the wedding a lot came over me and it's like I was tapping into my dad and my sister's energy of why they are the way they are and and then it came to the moment where I said okay this is the way they are but they also like they're living their life in the way that they want to live it and it could be so much worse like our family is alive and well and healthy knock on wood and um (laughs) what that that buddhism practice keeps coming through to me and everything that i'm saying and doing and living is just let it be let them be the way they are release the burden release the attachment release the control and that's like ah man that's that's helping me not suffer that's helping me feel this release this non-grasping I'm not responsible for my mother's you know toxic ways of being in a relationship with um, her husband who I will never like me and my sister will never like him and it's okay that's just the way it is I thank my spirit guides and I thank God and I thank whatever energy and entity is protecting me because thankfully I'm not like my mom and as awesome as she is I've I'm a completely different person because I will not settle I will not be with a toxic man I will not be in a relationship um, that degrades me and belittles me and I will not be in a controlling atmosphere or toxic patriarchy atmosphere and that's what she's just used to being around and I can't change her I can't change the way that she sees things I tried for seven months when I was living with her and my stepdad during COVID and it was like chipping away at a never-ending pile of like cement and I say that as you know the tower card um trying to fuck it's just wow um I can't change her but what I've learned from seeing that toxic way of being like she's been the role model that I needed in a in a negative way that turned positive because by seeing her in a marriage that disgusted me you know just emotional abuse manipulation degrading sense of humor and just mean and um 
I, it showed me, I, I never want that. I mean, I'd rather be single for the rest of my life than have that. And I'm, I've actually come to terms with being single for the rest of my life. <laughs> as, as depressing as that sounds, I, um, I've had so many toxic and abusive relationships, both on the physical realm, emotional, mental, manipulative, narcissistic. And my mother's married to that person. <laughs> my mother is married to that archetype narcissist manipulative um fake manipulative did I say that already yeah um oh and he's a Trump supporter so without you know putting too much energy into that you see where I'm coming from and by her showing me that you know maybe those those ways of being kind of they did stick with me through high school and college and a little bit after college. I have never had a healthy relationship. That's why I'm so comfortable being alone. That's why I'm so comfortable being single. I don't have the energy to deal with people anymore. I just really don't. Call me salty. Call me mean. I get comments from you guys in my in my DMs sometimes. And I say you guys, like, I doubt those people are even listening to this podcast. <laughs> Anyways, um, I get, I do get people who DM me and tell me that I'm mean because, like, I will say things for how they are. And it's just like, I don't fucking care. I'm not here to sugarcoat anything anymore. I used to be like that. And... I used to date men who would, you know, label me as too much, too intense, too slutty, too provocative, um, too emotional, too this, too that. And (laughs) so my too muchness, you know, my strength and my perseverance and my my wanting for people to be better people and my my thriving for people to like do the things that they say they're gonna do like that's a big thing for me it's like when I'm in a relationship um and like they say they're gonna do something and they don't that is like the biggest turn off I've I will just shut down I I just I can't take people seriously who say they're gonna do something and then they don't do it it's like why say that you're going to do it then? Just don't even bother saying that you're going to do it. Like, like in fact, say that you're going to do less and actually do more. That way, the person who you're doing more for sees you in that way of like, oh, they're doing more than I expect. Because when you're not living up to somebody's expectation, like that's the perfect recipe for um, resentment. And resentment comes in the form of like you know just everything like roommates relationships family um everything so what the fuck dude it's just it's so crazy like don't you know when when if you're with someone or if you're in a relationship or you have a friendship or a roommate or whatever and they say they're not going to do something and they don't do it instead of instead of like instead of like feeling that like allow yourself to feel that resentment but also like understand like maybe they are having a really rough time like doing things and like maybe they're depressed you know maybe their mental health is really struggling and maybe they want to be a certain way but they they don't know how and they they can't change um so that's a whole other thing but communication is definitely key there is so many things that I wanted to talk about in this episode that I like I I did check off a lot of things in my notes um but I did want to talk a lot more about meditation on anger and meditating on things so I'm going to do that in another episode but I did I did hit a lot of points here what I'm trying to say um is that 
connection is really, really important right now. And if we let our emotions get the best of us and ruin what relationships we do have, like with our family, um, which I've done in the past, you know, I have ruined relationships in the past because of my emotions and the way that I reacted. Not a cute look, not a good look. Um, So this experience and going to my dad's and going to the wedding really, really is helping me strengthen my ability to get outside of my comfort zone and not let it stress me out and enjoy life. And it was so fun. Like, I'm so glad that I did it because me and my friend Kevin went to my friend's wedding. He was my date. He was so fun. You know, um, we just, we made an experience out of it. We made a journey out of it and we were on the same level the entire time. We liked the same music, you know, we, we talked like really deeply about a lot of things on, on our road trip to, to Maryland. And I didn't realize that he has a lot of the similar kind of traits of how me and my sister's relationship is. It's been really rocky in the past and, um, him and his brother have a really rocky relationship. So it was so, I can't express to you guys how important it is to, just like dip your toes in these waters of talking about these things to people because I first of all I had no idea he had a brother second of all I had no idea that he had these issues with family members and just by us starting to dip our toes in talking about those things with each other on the the road trip completely it unlocked a new dimension of our friendship you know and if I didn't if we didn't start talking about those things then maybe it would be down a level it would be like we're surface level still you know our friendship is you know me and his friendship is definitely not surface level it's the opposite of that um and he's just like that kind of person that I can just talk really deeply about stuff with so the importance of not letting our anger and our resentment and our attachment to things being the way that we wish they were and instead we we use that energy as information and again this is what Sharon Salzberg talks a lot about is using our quote-unquote negative emotions like anger and sadness and grief and disbelief and disgust and rage and using that energy as information and metabolizing it and alchemizing it into oh like this is why I'm feeling this because I feel like my boundary has been crossed or I feel like my needs aren't being met. I feel like this person doesn't uh, respect me or I feel like I like this person or I love this family member and they don't love me or it's deep. Our emotions are information. And instead of us becoming raging lunatics and sending a text that can really be mean or sending an email that comes across as being controlling and a bitch um meditating on the the hard emotions that will actually create space between you and the emotion and within that space will give us like the capability of like transforming it um again sharon salzberg talks a lot about this so go check her podcast out the one recently on Duncan Trussell's podcast with Sharon Salzberg she talks a lot about it and I had such a big epiphany about anger and it's like why it I've asked myself this why would I meditate on something that's that I don't like or something that I that's hard like emotions or meditate on an experience that really pissed me off and it's because we're actually like rewiring the brain and repaving those neural pathways in our brain to process that anger and that experience or how that person did you wrong and making use of it like transforming and alchemizing that pain and that suffering into something that is going to be more useful rather than just like letting the anger take control of your body and your blood is boiling and 
your cortisol levels are rising and then your heart's be- beating and none of that is is helping your body none of that is helping your mental health and none of that is actually going to help any of the relationships in your life so yeah like again I, I keep circling back to buddhism and meditation but I think you understand how important it is, especially in the realm of addiction recovery, eating disorder recovery, or just healing from trauma, or just, you know, when you're all shooken up, when you're awakening and you're in that awakening process of like understanding again, like why you are the way you are and feeling grief about your family and and the relationships in your family that you just need to feel grief for you know I'm never gonna have a relationship with my mom and my sister in the way that my dream fantasy land you know rose-colored glasses wants to wants it to be and that acceptance is liberation but with that liberation comes grief and sadness and depression and depression is a huge I don't want to say roadblock, but it's just part of the path of awakening and surrender and radical acceptance. Because again, just accepting what is like that, that sentence kind of has like a frequency of, I don't, I I don't want to say depression, but yeah. Yeah. So when I say the sentence just accept what is you know it is kind of a low frequency um sentence it's it's a low frequency phrase but accepting what is you know it's liberating and it's freeing but it also is paired with depression and at this point in my journey the most liberating thing for me is just understanding that I can't change anyone in my family. I can't change anyone in my family and force our relationship to be the way that I wish it would be in those rose-colored glasses. So I keep coming back to Buddhism and meditation because it's the, it's the glue that's holding my soul together right now. And along with that is the smallest bits of joy that you can experience in your rituals and your routines. Um, that's also the glue of my soul right now because that gives me this sense of security, safety, knowing, because right now we are in the complete unknown, you know, the tower card um, keeps coming up and I talked a lot about it in this episode so I know that you understand it a little bit more and it's actually a good thing. It's like giving yourself permission to release the grip of the structure of your family, the structure of your home, and the structure of your emotions that are that are like gripping you so hard and it's just like release let them be the way they are at the end of the day this mantra has been helping me a lot I know it sounds it's not a spiritual mantra it's just like a phrase that came to mind with all of like my anger and my preferences and my control that can come up in my everyday life um is it doesn't really matter (laughs) the phrase it doesn't really matter like the dish in the sink doesn't really matter the the mess in the kitchen doesn't really matter at the end of the day yes it's uncomfortable it doesn't really matter you know at the end of the day like yeah everybody wants to have a clean house but like there's a lot pick and choose your battles pick and choose your battles, 
72-hour rule, meaning if you have something that you really want to express to someone that you're on the fence about and you're saying, oh, I don't know. I don't know if this is like too needy. I don't know if this is too controlling. I don't know if this is just my anger and my resentment coming through or if this, this is a past trauma that's telling me that they need to do this in this certain way or I need to express to them in this certain way because, you know, my, my traumas are coming up. The 72-hour rule journal about it meditate on it again meditating on it means just meditate on it <laughs> meditate on the idea the thought the feeling what they did what what you want just meditate on it for two days that's actually not 72 hours so three days and then if you're still feeling the same way then do it or talk with talk with your therapist about it first I love my therapist and I will like email her like advice like I'll, I'll ask her advice um and she'll just give me advice like like she's so fucking cool like I asked her the other day like oh how would you go about talking to a friend about this without coming off as being too controlling and she literally told me like what she would say and it's like thank you like sometimes you need direction <laughs> I really need to be told, like, maybe you should say it like this, because if you say it that way, you're going to seem like a complete bitch. I'm a Sagittarius, Scorpio rising, Gemini moon. I am an intense person, and that circles me back to embracing this. Yeah, I'm an intense person. Sometimes I say things that might come off as being kind of rude, um, <laughs> like... Like last night, um, I I told my roommate that I get claustrophobic in the kitchen, and I didn't mean to come off as like being rude because she was in the kitchen. Like, she's allowed to be in the kitchen, but I think maybe the way that I expressed it was saying like, you know, I don't want to use the kitchen when she's in there, and I don't think she took it that way. But I sometimes will be like, okay, Gab, like you you need to like fo like work on the way that you um deliver <laughs> delivery is really important delivery in our words is really important and that's that's what meditation actually helps with is like meditating on like how to express something to someone and how our emotions and our feelings um can be the information that we need to change our reactions and all that so also kill with kindness that helps I have that written down under the 72 hour rule killing with kindness because at the end of the day nobody's nobody wants to be around someone who is like belittling or degrading or makes themselves feel small or calls them out on all of their bullshit like nobody wants to be around that <laughs> so again pick and choose your battles 72 hour rule kill with kindness and at the end of the day, this mantra of it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. So hope that helped. I love you guys. This episode was kind of like a big Buddha meditation salad energetic stuff. And it was actually really, really enjoyable for me to get this all out to you. So I hope you enjoy it. If you did, um, maybe share this episode with a friend or a family member feel free to hit me up on instagram and all of the stuff that i talked about in the episode will be in the show notes and if you need yoga or meditation all of my classes and meditations are in my etsy shop all right love you guys walking outside labyrinthian over cracks along under the trees i know this town grounded in a compass Cardinal landing in the dogwood I keep going over it over and over My steps iterate my shame How come every outcome such a come down Lately afternoon with the shades drawn down Kept saying I just wanted to see it Saying what's wrong with that Needle shaking outlines in a compass Every outcome such a come down
coming back from going over your place, huh? I feel like we could forget about it. I feel like I could mellow out. I don't feel undone in a big way. There's nothing really bad to be upset about. When I thought I was getting better, I woke up on the ground and appointment or disappointment. Set back on. Walking out in the nighttime, springtime, needling my way home. I saw Leah on the bus a few months ago. I saw some old friends at her funeral. My steps keep splitting my grief through these solipsistic moods. I should call my parents when I think of them. Should tell my friends when I love them. Maybe I should have gone out of bed guys are still in town, I got too caught up in my own shit, how every outcome such come down.